Hello, <clears throat> my name is Darren Thomas. I'm the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to be introduced to functions. Functions are a key component of any programming language, and one of the benefits of functions is that it saves you time. Because functions are like pre-written pieces of script or code that you use frequently. In fact, you use them so much that you literally write them down and you allow them to take on different values and arguments within them that the function is able to transform. Now this might seem strange, but I'm, I want to go straight to an example to make this clear and, and cut theoretical fluff. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a function that multiplies any given number by 10. And so we're going to call this function times 10. It's not a very unique name, but it works. And of course, once you give an object a name, you must use the, 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 the less than uh, mouth and then also the dash so that you can actually put the information inside the object. And so to make a function, you must use the function function. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. And inside the parentheses of the function, you have to put the argument. And the argument is the thing the function is going to do something to. So I hope that makes sense. But in this particular function that we're making, we're going to have one argument and we're going to call it x. One thing I need to mention is that you can call your argument anything you want. But for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to call it x. Um, I'm not sure if there's guidelines on that, but this is what we're going to do in our example. There's nothing special about using the term x. That's just what we're going to use. Now, after you put in your argument, and now notice, I'm going to repeat this, that we only have one argument in this particular function that we're making. You need to use the curly braces. And the curly braces are right next to the letter P on your keyboard if you're using a QWERTY um, keyboard. So we press that. And then we want to put a little space between them, so we press Enter. And now everything inside the curly braces, these, these are the mechanisms that are going to affect the function. And so what we're going to do is, is our goal is, is to multiply any, any value x by 10. And so what we're going to do is we're going to make a object, or better, probably better call it a variable inside the function called number. Again, I can give this thing any name I want. And in this function, I'm sorry, inside this variable, we're going to do x which times 10. Now, again, remember that x is our argument. x can be any value that we want. And so what we're telling um, R is that we're making a function called times 10. And inside that function, we're going to save a variable or an object that multiplies x, which is our argument, by 10. Now, we're not done yet. Once R multiplies our x value by 10, we have to make sure that R prints or shows us the value. And so to do that, we use the return function. And we put inside it our variable number, our, our object number. Once all these steps are done, you press shift control enter to, st to store to save the actual function. But I want to slow down one more second because if you're new to this, this is very confusing. What we did was we made an object called times 10. It's technically a function. And we used the function argument here, right here. And we have one argument called x. And what are we going to do to x? Very, very simple. We're going to take x, multiply it by 10, and we're going to store it inside the variable, or you can say the object called number. And then after we do that, we're going to have our return our, uh, the value that is inside number, okay? And that's how we're doing this. So now I press Shift, Control, Enter, and everything is in the system. Now it is time to use our new function. So I'm going to do times 10, and I'm going to put the value 5 for my for in place of x. And then if I press Enter, I get the answer 50. And again, for my x value at this particular time, it was 5. 5 times 10 is 50. So there you have it. My beautiful function works. Now, but what if I'm in a hurry and I want to multiply, say, several numbers? Can I do that? Well, let's see here. Let's say I want to do 3, 4, and 5. Well, no, I cannot do that. You can see I have an error here. And the question you're probably asking is, why did we get an error when we wanted to do several numbers? It's because if you look at the function, I only put one argument here. So what I'm telling R is, is that look for one number and multiply it by 10. But when I try to use the function, I put in three numbers. That's not how it's supposed to be. And if you look closely, it even tells me what the problem is. Error, unused arguments four and five. 
In other words, R was waiting for the first argument, 3, but then two more came and it was surprised. Now, to get around this, I have to make sure that I have one object. And so what I can do is I can make another object where I store several numbers and use the C function, the concatenate function, to save them all as one object. If that didn't make sense, let me show you. I'm going to make, oh, excuse me, I'm going to make an object called many numbers. And inside that, I'm going to use the concatenate function, and I'm going to click 3, 4, and 5, and I press enter. So I store my three numbers inside one object. Now, if I use my times 10 function, it will work. And you can see there. Why? Because even though there were several numbers, they were all stored inside one object. That's the difference. So I hope that this video was useful for you. In this particular video, we learned the basics of how to make a function. And again, the function in this video was probably, probably the most simple, most boring function possible, but it does work. And basically, a function allows you to reuse code without having to retype it every single time. It's very, very efficient. In this particular video, we made a function where you it multiplied a number by 10. To make a function, you must first, of course, give it a name. Uh, it's also called an object. You use the function function, uh, inside of parentheses of the function function, you put how many arguments you're going to have, and then after that, you use the curly braces, and you indicate inside of the curly braces what the function is going to do. So when our, in our function is going to multiply our argument x by 10, save it inside something called number, and then it is going to return the value number. That is what our function did. Now you have to store the results of your function inside a variable in order for R to print it, otherwise you'll get error messages and problems. Uh, after we did this, the next step that we did was we actually used a function. And so if you look here, we did times 10, that's the name of our function, in parentheses we put five, and so we're telling R, multiply five by 10. And we get this beautiful output 50. However, when we tried to multiply several numbers, we got an error message because R was only expecting one argument, but we gave it three. To get around that problem, we saved several numbers inside one object, and by putting in the one object, we were able to get the several numbers for the output. So there you have it. I hope this video was useful for you, and I would like to thank you for watching. Take care.